we know from mechanics that forces come from derivatives of potential energy. If u is the potential energy function for some object, taking the derivative with respect to x of that gives you the component of the force on that object in the x direction, up to a minus sign. And once you get some vector calculus under your belt, you can bundle up all the information about all the components using a gradient operator. And I'll write the definition of a gradient in Cartesian as a reminder. Now, I've been claiming that you can understand field and voltage by analogy to force and energy. And this analogy continues to hold. Just as derivatives of energies yield forces, derivatives of voltages produce fields. This is the mathematical expression of the claim that electric field points downhill with respect to voltage. Fields point in the direction of steepest ascent, which is what the gradient tells you, and field components in particular directions come from taking particular derivatives. This is something we can verify with the point charge equations. Take the negative derivative with respect to r of kq over r, and you'll get kq over r squared which is the radial component of the E-field made by a point charge. Taking derivatives is relatively easy, so getting from potential to field usually isn't too bad. Getting from field to potential, however, takes a bit of work. Since derivatives carry you from potential to field, you probably won't be too surprised to discover that integrals carry you from field to potential. This is a path integral, an integral that goes from one point in space to another, and it lets you calculate the difference in voltage between any two points in space. Once again, it links back into mechanics, since integrating a force along some path gives you changes in energy. We'll follow up on this integration procedure in a worked example later on. As a quick aside, in statics, electric fields are always conservative fields. And what that means is that if you integrate them along some path that forms a closed loop, you end up with no net change. Rephrased, for conservative fields, the integral around a closed loop is always zero. And a side effect of that is that if we integrate the field from one point to another point, the answer doesn't depend on which path we take the voltage difference between one point and another is path independent. Summing things up, we've seen a bunch of relationships between force, energy, field, and voltage, and we can arrange those in a fairly compact set. These are the equations describing these four fundamental quantities for point charges. And here are the operations that carry you from one quantity to the other. Force and field, and voltage and energy, are linked by multiplication or division by Q. And going between force and energy, or field and voltage, involves integration or differentiation. As before, some of these equations are valid only for point charges. But the operations that carry you from one quantity to another are general, and it's well worth spending a little time to get nice and comfortable with this set. And most importantly, these operations show you how to get from voltage to anything else. And since voltage is a scalar, it's relatively easy to work with. So in actual practice, people will often make it a point to find the voltage of a system before they do anything else, and then work from there.